Good evening. Is this on? There we go. Good evening and welcome to our board meeting. The uh, agendas are posted on the front and two side walls, so if you'd like to follow, we appreciate that. Um, we'd like to excuse two board members, Mitzi Kawaguchi and Bruce Jardine are both uh, excused and we'll miss them being with us tonight, but uh, we will open our meeting by a Pledge of Allegiance given by our Business Administrator, Dr. Robert Peterson, please. Thank you, Robert. Board, I would uh, entertain a motion on the consent calendar as our first item on the agenda. Please. Moved by Doug. Do I have a second? Second by Paul. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, board. Motion to open a public hearing. So moved by Dean, second by Janice. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Robert, we'll turn the time over to you for the overview of the proposed tax rate increase, please. Um, can everyone hear me? All right, it's good to be here this evening. Um, you've been given a handout that duplicates what you'll see on the screen, and then I will also explain things as we go along so it's easy to follow along, and it's on both sides of the room and the front of the room. Um, on November 7th of last year, 2017, Weaver School Board had a bond election where voters approved the construction of new facilities and, and, uh, and buildings. Um, First off, thanks to the voters who approved the bond election. Of the eight school districts across the state, Weaver passed our bond election by the highest percentage. With the full support and approval of Weaver voters and taxpayers, we are moving forward with these needed capital projects. So thanks again, Weaver County voters. Another thing I'd like to point out is that this bond election was just for construction only. Um, uh, when we pass the bond, we cannot use those funds for ongoing cost or needs. It's just for construction. And in this case, we have five projects that were approved by the voters and taxpayers. And three of these five, the Fremont High School expansion, the replacement school at Roy High Junior High, and the Weaver Innovations expansion, high school expansion, these three projects do not require um, ongoing or operating costs. However, we have two new elementaries. And the need for these elementaries is painfully obvious. We have severe overcrowding at Far West Elementary and Majestic Elementary. And these two elementaries are, are strategically placed in, in the community of Far West out in the Bermuda area and also in Pleasant View to help alleviate the pressure on these burgeoning student populations. Um, these two new schools are standalone schools and they will require ongoing costs. And uh, so let's look at what those ongoing costs are. Okay, um, the new school, after the construction has been built, and they're being, they're underway right now. They're scheduled to open a year from now, next August, 2019. But we have to heat and light the buildings, utilities. Staff are needed, a secretary, media aid, office aid, teacher aides, you know, custodial staff, tech support, uh, the counselor, school nurse hours, reading specialist, a school principal. We have calculated that per school, it's about $840,000 cost. And since there are two schools, double that to $1,680,000. And so these are the costs to actually operate the schools. <clears throat> um, without 
these individuals and the money for utilities and those type of things, these schools would be unable to open. They'd be buildings that we could not operate. Next slide. So what are the options for the ongoing revenue? Uh, basically, the board has two tools at their disposal. There's a voted leeway and a board approved levy. Um, with a voted leeway, sometimes they're held in conjunction with the bond election. Had we done that, the um, a voted leeway would have passed a year early and state law mandates that once a voted leeway is put into place, you immediately have to assess the tax. And so that would have, um, a, a voted leeway would have raised taxes a year early, causing an unneeded taxpayer burden. <clears throat> the school district, the school board, wisely chose the board approved levy option because that would raise the money as we need it without burdening taxpayers. In addition, there was full transparency. During the, during the bond campaign, voters and taxpayers were informed at every turn that a board leeway was going to be the consideration to help fund the ongoing costs for these schools. Uh, like also, the Weaver School District Board has historically balanced the needs of children and taxpayers because they're, they're aware of all their constituents and they know that everyone is important. Um, in the year just ended, Weaver School District ranked 13 out of 15 Wasatch Front uh, school districts in tax rate. These are districts that range from Nevo on the south to Cash on the north. With this increase that is being proposed tonight, they will remain at 13 out of 15, well below, well below the average for tax rates along the Wasatch Front for school districts. <clears throat> um, the other thing I'd like to point out is, even with this additional tax rate increase, the rate that is being proposed is actually lower than the rate of the prior year. And I'll point that out in a, in a couple minutes. Next slide. There are other factors when it comes to um, uh, uh, tax rates. When taxpayers get their individual tax notices, it's, there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, one of those is assessed value. Uh, when your home or your property rises in value, your taxes are going to be impacted. And the assessed values are out of the control of Weaver School Board. Uh, the, they're controlled by the economy and the market but more importantly, also by the county assessor and the state tax commission helps as well. Other taxing entities, when an individual taxpayer gets their tax notice, there are multiple entities, and there might be other entities also having uh, tax adjustments. What other entities do is not controlled by the Weaver School Board. If you look at the other entities that are in Weaver County that are up for some type of tax adjustment, there are six of them, in West Haven, at the top, down to the Weaver Basin Water uh, in, in Ogden City. Um, of these, Weaver District has the lowest percentage, 3.18%. And an average cost on an average home in our county of 20, of our, in our district of $23.57. I'd like to point out that this is a very targeted tax increase. It is being spent on nothing else. There is no other, there is no, there are no other items or costs associated with that other than the opening of these two new schools and that's it. Next slide. Um, so let's look at our proposed uh, tax increase. Uh, first off, it's important to note that the entire assessed value, this is the, the value of all the properties in the district. That includes land, uh, homes, businesses. Our assessed value last year was almost nine and a half billion, nine billion four hundred ninety-three million, and it went up a healthy sixteen percent to a little over eleven billion. That's a that's a good increase. Um, when tax rates increase like that, the state tax commission, working with the county, they establish a new certified rate from which you go, which you build on, and this is last year's final rate, and this is the certified rate. Now these taxes down here. Or, uh, these, these rates right here are controlled by Weber School District. We have four of them, the voted, the board, the capital, and what we call the general obligation bond. And you'll note that the rate last year for these rates that are controlled by Weber School District was 
0.004730. Then the certified rate is issued by the uh, county and the state at 0.004418. The rate drops. We are proposing to raise the board certified rate from 00931 to 001084. This will raise the needed 1.6 million for the operation costs of those two new elementaries to serve all those kids. <clears throat> this will cost your average taxpayer on a $280,000 home $23.50 a year, about $1 per school per month. Uh, you'll note that the new rate controlled by Weaver School District, 0 0.004571, is actually lower than the rate last year that was the final rate. Um, another thing that's interesting about these levies is this levy right here, the general obligation bond, or the debt service levy as it's sometimes called, this levy does not necessarily fall under the certified rate, even though it has a certified rate here. This rate right here is only purpose is to pay off bonds. Weaver School District in the last 20 years has had four bond elections, and miraculously, they have never raised this rate. We have kept this rate constant through four bond election cycles. Um, this unchanged rate has saved taxpayers millions of dollars. There are very, very few districts in the state that could, that could, that could talk like that. And this is a tribute to the wise fiscal management of Weaver School Board. The Weaver School Board has paced themselves in a prudent manner that benefits both students. They don't build too far in advance. We build and construct buildings as they are needed, uh, waiting until the growth demands it and or that the conditions of the buildings demand it because some of our buildings are replacements because the buildings are getting old. Uh, the, I can't emphasize enough how, how fiscally prudent the Weaver School Board has been at pacing building costs versus taxpayer um, uh, needs. Another set of levies are state education levies. These are outside of the control of Weaver School District. They're controlled by the state legislature. These include the state basic rate and a charter school levy. You'll note that these went up a little bit. When you combine both these levies, you get an overall rate of 0 0.006307. And uh, this is the rate that is being proposed to be approved tonight. Bottom line, we appreciate the voters' confidence as reflected in the 2017 bond election. In every public presentation, and there was about 53 public presentations, the board levy was, was uh, indicated as the means of raising the needed operating costs. Also, the board is very transparent in every literature, or every piece of literature and every, every, every um, uh, website information that this would be the case. <clears throat> Without this modest rate adjustment, we would not be able to open the new schools in Remuda and Pleasant View. President Ritchie, following public input as this hearing proceeds, there will need to be a motion to approve this final 0 0.006307 tax rate. And that's my presentation. Dr. Peterson, well done. Thank you. For those of you who have signed up uh, for your public comment, uh, we, I would invite you, um, as soon as we get a mic, to uh, please address us. I have the uh, list here, and uh, if uh, we could, we will limit that as we have to all of our public hearings to three minutes on your comments. So Claire will time us, and uh, Troy, go ahead. So the first one I have down is Mr. L. Board members, will you recognize Mr. L? Um, sir, I live in Washington Terrace. I do not own my home. I pay mortgage payment on it. Every year the taxes seem to go up on that property. If it isn't the Sheriff's Association, if it isn't the Sheriff's Department, it's the Weber School District. A few years ago, you guys needed emergency funds to pay for buses because nobody allocated management of those buses. Now today, after approving what I believe to be a bonus for all Weaver School District employees, that being $350 for non-certified employees and $500 for those 
certified employees, you come to us and tell us that you, we, you need more money to fund the administrative charges of two new schools. Did anybody even consider looking into that before giving a cost of living adjustment to all the school people in addition to these extra bonuses that are going to be paid out at the end of the year? My taxes didn't go up a lousy $23 like you claim. My taxes went up $100 for the simple fact my house appraised for much more than what it was last year. So already your coffers now have an additional $100. And with this increase, my $100 increase turns into $120. How many of you actually live in Washington Terrace or in the Weber County and are paying our school district's taxes? Thank you. And Douglas Hurst, you as my representative, I urge you to vote no on this increase and relook and reevaluate whether or not where these funds could come from to pay for the operational costs of these two new schools that were vitally needed for that population out there. I think you guys just continue to ask of us, the taxpayers, repeatedly more money, more emergency funding, more everything without taking the, the, into account what we're already paying. You get 30% of our tax dollars directly paid to you from the Weber County coffers, 30%. An additional 10% is being paid to the state. What are you gentlemen and ladies doing with this money? Uh, thank you, Mr. L. Next, Elaine Gardner, please. It's Ellen, E-L-L-E-N. Oh, I'm sorry. Ms. Name, Gardner. Yeah, my name is Ellen Gardner. I'm a retired person living on a fixed income in Riverdale. I have no children in school, no grandchildren in school, yet I pay Weber County school taxes. I have a problem with this for a couple of reasons, and I'm going to give you some of them tonight. One of them, students are being recruited from other districts to come to our Weber County schools mainly to play sports. And I know this for a fact. And, you know, their parents aren't paying our Weber County School District taxes. They're paying Davis County School District taxes. What's up with that? Why are we allowing this to happen? When someone on the Board of Education here was contacted, we were told, oh, next year they're going to register in Weber County. Really? Who's got proof of that? They're not even eligible last year to go to Weber County schools. They weren't high school age, but yet we bring them in, which eliminates children from our own district that don't get to play because those spots have been filled by outsiders. That's not right. There's also um, a, a nice discrepancy in salaries. I think we need to take go back, take a look at salaries there are some of the coaches in Weber County District that are making almost as much money as you are, sir. And you might want to look into that since you're the president or superintendent, the or board president. I guess that's you, Mr. Ritchie. Gee, how come you're not out there coaching those kids? This, this you know, no degree. Mm, maybe does, maybe doesn't teach a class. Geez, but the money he gets for being at a school and a coach, we need to maybe stop and look back. We need to back up and we need, you know, this new elementary school that needs funds. I was always taught if you're going to build something or do something, you need to look that item clear through before you do it. And you need to make plans for that, for the spending, for the employees, for the cleanup crew, whatever it is you need. Yes, okay, it can't be in that bond, evidently, for construction, but somebody should have been thinking about the fact that that school was going to need people to be employed by it. It was going to need equipment. We need to stop, step back, review your books, review the salaries, maybe even change some salaries and make some decreases on the upper ends, and you will find the money that's needed to pay this money for these schools. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry on the name. That's okay. Name has a 
Elaine. Miss Ellen. Ellen. I'm going to still say Miss Gardner. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Johnston. Thank you for the opportunity to meet with the board. <clears throat> uh, as probably some of you don't know, but Jeff knows very well, that I have been researching education for the last 20 years. My mother graduated Phi Beta Kappa out of the University of Nebraska in 1913 and taught country school in Nebraska where we had mixed ages in the room. Now we educate them in peer groups, assuming everybody learns everything at the same speed. And uh, Moore's law on the increase in technology has passed the education system by a long time ago. I appreciate the efforts that are being made at the Innovation High School. And if any of you have not been out there, why I would go out and meet with Nick. And uh, he's doing a marvelous job, but he's only got 250 students out of the entire high school population. So the thing is here, I uh, would uh, entertain a uh, opportunity to get into a further discussion with the competency-based education. I'm on the uh, group that's studying that down at the state board. So, and I can work with Jeff. And then I left him a message yesterday about the way other places train students. And the PSIA intelligence tests that are given every two years, the 16 is the last one, right, Jeff? And we're, the United States is in the lower 50 percentile. And does anybody want to tell me who's in first? Finland, and this book, The Smartest Kids in the World and How They Got That Way by Annette Riley is a very illuminating book on the education system. So I'll wait to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnston. Ms. Johnson. Jan Johnson, is that, or Jay, maybe it's Jay. Uh, yes, it is North Ogden. Yeah, sorry. Um, hey, thanks board and uh, it's public for coming. It's nice to see lots of people show up and, and to um, you know address, address our, our uh, elected leaders. Um, just wanted to uh, remind everybody that you know our tax liberation days is like in, I think, April 20th of every year, with it takes us that long to pay our taxes. And with healthcare, we make it to about to August, and then about September on is our money. And um, so I, I appreciate the thought that our tax dollars are, are sacred, and, and, and I appreciate you know the work that we all do to try to squeeze our dollars to go as far as we can. Um, I have just a couple of things I dug out just in researching that might be maybe something that you can look into to maybe maybe go a different direction. Um, in the Deseret News on March 16th, uh, they published an article about the Utah School Trust Lands that they had just had a record year in 2017. I can just show you that as well. But they brought in a record $74 million from the mining and oil and, and those sorts of rights. And it was a 15% increase over the prior year. That might be an option for something we can do to reduce our, our tax burden. Um, I know the legislature this past year passed a 3% increase on, you know, for each student going into this school year. And I know coming up in, in this November, they, the legislature came to that conclusion with, or came to the compromise with the, our Schools Now group that wanted to um, move the income tax from, uh, I think it was 5% up to 5.47%. And so they reached a, an agreement with the legislature um, to go about proposing a voter um, initiative, I think it's in November, for the 10 cent per gallon gas increase, which was going to go towards transportation that was going to free up money from the general fund to, to steer towards education. Um, I have a article. I'm trying to find the, the source for you. Um, 
one second. I'm, my invisible podium is as good as it ought to be. Um, oh, so, so basically, the, how that um, agreement went with the compromise between the, our schools now and the legislature stated that in, um, let's see, that the first year it was, it, and this is, a, this is uh, from the U Utah Income and Sales Tax Increase for Public Education Initiative 2018. Um, don't, it's from the Salt Lake Tribune. And it said that they had planned to the first year to get around $375 million um, in funding from that compromise, which would come in November if that does pass. But just wanted to throw those out as a couple of options. And also, um, we all know that uh, Governor Herbert and the legislature always all, uh, just recently um, passed the initiative that all the online transactions and sale taxes for online transactions will now be captured by, by the state uh, tax division as well, and we'll have an additional 60 million, up to, up to $60 million up for grabs of new, new revenue. But um, just wanted to share that as possible options that you might take into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Sorry about that name. Ms. Coe. Like Ms. Ellen that was here earlier, I'm a retiree. I live, I own my home. I've been there for 42 years. I have no children in school, no grandchildren in school. Why is it that people that rent either apartments or houses, that their children are not being paid for in school? We need a head tax. It's not fair to retirees to cover up, up these other people, you know? It just isn't because we're on a fixed income. And when our taxes go up, that puts a dent in something else we need to do, maybe improve our property. So I would like for you to consider that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cole. Uh, Mr. Cragen. Gentlemen, I really uh, appreciate your approach to things. Uh, you know, a year ago we had a, in Roy City a tremendous tax increase because people in the past had failed to do so. I've been to other meetings out here at the Weber County School District on tax increases, and I can understand the need for periodic increases. However, I think we need to look also at how many of the people are living in rental units, apartment units, as Mrs. Coe stated, and they're not paying taxes to send their kids to school. You know, I uh, retired several years ago. I'm retired on a fixed income, and every year or every couple years, it seems like we get a tax increase in the school district. And I realize the need for the money. I real not realize the need uh, for the services that you provide. But if there's any way that you can look, we've got a lot of retirees in our communities out there, and they need a tax break also. They're on fixed incomes. Uh, all, all of them I know, and... Uh, they don't have a lot of money to splurge on other things. So I would ask you to consider this very, very strongly about what you're about to do here. And if the money is needed, I can understand that. I've been in a business. But by the same token, uh, you know, we go out and build schools. We, we don't build schools, folks. So I'm going to tell you what really disappointed me. I went out to that Fremont High School when it was built. And uh, we build monuments to architects. When I went to school, I went to school at the old Grant School in Ogden, Central Junior High School, and Ben Lowen High School the first year that it opened. And they build classrooms, and they build square buildings, and they may even, some of them, have a gymnasium in them. And a field to go out and play a little football or, or, or baseball or, or sports on. But... 
We don't need to build the monuments to architects. What we need to do is build schools. And I don't mean something that's going to go out there. Uh, I, I went out to, to Fremont when they built that, and I was totally amazed at that school. And, you know, I realize you're going to build a new one in, in uh, Roy City for the new junior high school. And I'm going to ask you, be reasonable in what you're doing. And, and I don't think we have to build monuments to architects to educate our children in. I would ask you to consider some of the things. And, and if there's cheaper ways to do it, then look at cheaper ways to do it. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Mayor. Mr. Jacobson. Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I got one right. <laughs> you did great. Thank you for allowing me this time. I appreciate your efforts on the school board. Uh, I congratulate you on being number 13 of 15 in the taxing districts. The only way to improve would be 14 or 15. Hopefully that's your goal. Uh, Dr. Peterson, I appreciate this slide, but I honestly don't understand it. I don't know if there's an opportunity for you to clarify, uh, but this shows that uh, last year's were 728 for an average home. This year it would be 680 without the increase and 703 with the increase. However, on my taxes, uh, your your value increased 17 percent. My home is magically worth 17 or 16 percent. My home is magically worth 17 percent more, and that's of no value to me. That's only of value to taxing entities. And uh, my taxes last year would have been $835 to the district. This year, without the increase, they would be 916. And next year, they would be 748. So I don't agree with those numbers that go down. And if you could clarify those later, I'd appreciate it. Uh, I'd also like to quote uh, from last month's, or from June's meeting minutes. It says, Dr. Peterson summarized, we are estimating the general fund balance to grow by 2.5 million. Our balances are healthy and stable. So I would purport to you that if your balances are healthy and stable and growing, you don't need a tax increase. I'd ask that you vote against this tax increase, use the extra money coming in from our taxes, and cover the expenses that way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobson. Um, Mr. Leonard. Thank you for the opportunity to address you. I really can't, don't have any statistics to add to what have, or uh, to what has been, or even sentiments to add to what has been uh, already voiced by other people, but I agree with them. And I think that there's got to be another way to do this than a tax increase on us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, seeing none others that have came in, that's at the end of our list for the uh, public hearing. So uh, with that, I would um, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved by Janice, seconded by Doug. So, board, uh, you've heard the discussions. This is not a uh, fun position for us to be in. However, uh, it is something that's needed. Um, I believe the talking points that, that uh, Dr. Peterson mentioned on two new schools, the board being very frugal, um, the concern from the citizens, we are our citizens as well. We had those same inputs, Mayor, uh, that you have. You know, I live in that community that got hit by that. I understand that. Uh, we have an influx of kids that are coming. And with that, this is an extremely moderate tax increase for two schools. Um, I will state that the voted leeway that was attached to the bond that we opted not to do would have given us a year of that money in the bank that we chose not to, to spend. We opted to, to wait and do a truth in taxation. And uh, not we want, we're very transparent. And I hope you realize that because uh, that's what we've done as a board. That's what we've done as a district. And uh, our rate is still 
13 or 15. Uh, and we're still able to maintain some of our great teachers when other districts are not. Uh, but this does not go towards teacher salary. This simply will staff that school with uh, the people to make that work. So uh, we will maintain 13 or 15. So with that, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the proposed tax rate of 0 0.006307. Well, at what point can I make a comment? Sure. After the fact or now? Just one moment, please. Just okay. If I could make get the motion. Okay. I move that we um, accept the motion, but I'd like to make a comment. Um, I listen to each of you, and I know exactly how you feel. I am retired. I am on a fixed income. I pay the same taxes that all of you pay. I guess the difference in me or for me is that I understand because I'm involved in all of the energy that goes into raising taxes. None of us want to raise taxes. The taxes that we are asking for are only to open those two schools. So when you talk about teachers' wages and um, doing things different, we don't do a lot of the things. We don't have control over the taxes and how they're, they're charged, how you're charged for your taxes. We are given exact directions on how to collect taxes, on what kinds of things we can do. And I don't want to raise taxes, but in this case, and maybe possibly in the future, I don't know, I can't read the future. But we, as a school board, have been as frugal and careful with your tax money as we can possibly be. We do not raise taxes easily. And I think we've proved it. The time I've been on the school board, we raise taxes very, very little. Now you can't, you can't tell me that if, how many students do we have, superintendent? You can't tell me that you can educate 32,000 students, how many teachers? 1,700 teachers, 40, I'll say 42 schools, I'm not sure, 42 buildings that we educate kids in, that costs a lot of money. School buses. School buses. Thank you. You have to remember that I think it was 1986, the State Board of Education, well, the legislature made us pay back money they've given us and put us way behind. Was that the year? I can't remember exactly. We had, to, we had to pay money back to the legislature so they could pay their bills. It put us way behind. And it's taken us 10 years to get caught up again. Oh yeah, 2008, nine and 10. 
okay? Those years were very, very lean for the school system. So, I move that we accept this tax increase that will pay for the two new schools that we're building. Thank you, That's board member. That's nothing to do with this meeting. We got a we got a motion on the floor, board members. Uh, thank you, board member Wilborn, for that motion. I'd entertain a second as well as your comment. Second by uh, Doug Hurst. Any discussion? And that would be you, uh, Janice. Please. Um, I just wanted to comment that I live on the north end of the district, and for years the people around me have been begging for new space in schools. There have been the add-on trailers after trailer after trailer. They have begged for space. And we said, we'll do it when it's absolutely necessary, and then we'll do it in the most economical way possible. When the levy or when the bond was passed, there was no surprise that it would not be ongoing to pay for these costs that are discussed. It was not like that was a shock. That was the most economical way to pay for new space for kids and then there was knowledge that there would have to be the most economical way to have the ongoing funding. So it wasn't a surprise or failure to think through or it, it's the hard facts of what it takes to accommodate the populations of students. And I'm sorry that the south end pays for the north end and the north end pays for the west end. We're a district. And we're all bound to educate the kids in our district, whether they're ours or not. They still will contribute to the community, good or bad, depending on their education. I understand what count, what board member Alborn said, not one of us wants to cost somebody else money. It's a very difficult thing to try to accommodate these children. Thank you. Thank you, board member Christensen. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor? Or do we have another comment? I'd just like to make please comment. Please. The one that struck me is we say we're the 13th lowest out of the 15 along the Wasatch Front. And the challenge was to become the 15th. Well, 14 and 15 are the Murray School District and the Salt Lake School District that has tremendous commercial property, which pays a lot higher tax rate. So the assessed valuation in those two districts are extremely high, so they can have a lower tax rate that we don't have that luxury to do. The Weaver School District is mostly residential, so it wouldn't be possible or frugal or possible for us to, to try to be the 15th. So, but of the, the 13 that we compared with that have reasonable similarities to us, we are the lowest. Thank you, Board Member Hurst. I'll intend to vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, board. And I hope that you do understand what we're saying. I mean, yeah, we do. And we had a public hearing. We listened. Thank you. And uh, so the next item on the agenda in order to carry on would be the uh, selection of a contractor for Roy Junior High's replacement. Scott Zelmer, please. 
Thank you, President Ritchie. Superintendent Stevens and the board, as part of the ongoing construction schedule that was created with the passage of the bond last year, a request for proposals was issued for construction management general contractor services for the Roy Junior High School rebuild that will be going on uh, shortly here. Um, members of the Capital Improvement Committee, along with Design West Architects, who was the architect we selected for this, this building, discussed in detail the bids and services the contractors would provide. The committee unanimously voted in favor of the costs and services submitted by Hogan and Associates Construction in the amount of $943,500. This recommend, the recommendation of the Capital Improvement Committee that the Board of Education approve Hogan and Associates Construction as the construction manager general contractor for the uh, rebuild of Roy Junior High School. Thank you, Scott. Board, you've heard the uh, presentation by Mr. Zomer. I'd entertain a motion to approve Hogan and Associates Construction as the CMGC for the Roy Junior High project. Motion by Paul. Second. Second, Second by Dean. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any, Aye. any opposed? Motion carries. Um, if I could just go right back to the, the public hearing. Robert, would you do me a favor and make sure that you get with Mr. Jacobson uh, and clarify that sometime, please? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, board, we have need for a closed session to discuss to discover the strategy session of purchase, exchange, lease, or sell of a real, of real estate property. This is a roll call vote. One of our board members is exited temporarily, but we could still have a, a quorum. <clears throat> um, uh, Paul Whittison. Uh, Doug Hurst. Dean O'Boyle. Aye. And John Ritchie. Aye. Very good. We will adjourn. Thank you to those that come. Thank you, staff, for uh, your time tonight and preparing. We look forward to the excitement that's in the air as school's just around the corner. Thank you. <laughs>